Hello, my friends. My name is Don, and today I'm here with Stormbringer Magazine number six. Uh, so this is obviously... So with this issue, we have 10 Hobgrot Slittas. So mine are already off the sprue. I put them together and primed them. I gave them a, a medium gray with a zenithal white over the top. Actually, these ones might have been a, a lighter gray, but uh, that's fine. Next first four. Next three, they're wearing uh, very little in the way of clothing, just that little bit of armor plate on their chest. And uh, All Oryx are creatures of brute strength and low cunning. In this way, they embody the twin nature of their god, Gorka Morka, and they have spread their violence across the mortal realms. Each of Gorka Morka's heads represents a different aspect of destruction. One head, Gork, is brutal but cunning, with the other head, Mork, is cunning but brutal. All Oryx venerate Gorka Morka, but some Orc cultures favor one aspect of the twin-headed god over the other. The Cruel Boys are followers of Mork and believe that brains are better than brawn. After all, why would you want to charge someone head-on when you could sneak around and stab them in the back? However clever Cruel Boys may be, they cannot be reasoned with. They seek only violence and battle. The Cunning Mork Mork is the aspect of cunning. Any fight suits Mork as long as it's an unfair one. The Cruel Boys worship Mork by, by acts of great cunning and cleverness. Lying, cheating, and ambushing enemies are all especially Morky acts. Mork's magical power allows the shamans of the Cruel Boys to summon concealing mists and spoil the sorceries of other wizards. The brutality of Gork. Gork is the aspect of brutality. Gork embodies a simple creed of might makes right the raw strength over thinking. The small are to be bullied and crushed. The strong are to be cut down. Such is Gork's way. The Cruel Boys' brutality is seen in their domination of beasts. Cruel Boys often earn their mounts by beating them into submission. Brains, Brawn, and Battle. Oryx live for war, and it is on the battlefield that their mastery of cunning and brutality is most clear. Cruel Boys plot and scheme before battle has even begun. They send out hidden crews to delay enemies, harass camping soldiers, and set traps. This ensures that by the time the Cruel Boys' foe shows up to battle, they are exhausted and disoriented. When battle begins, the Cruel Boys finally unleash their brutal might. Gut rippers fall upon enemies in a savage frenzy of violence, leaving their enemies trampled and broken in the mud. Meanwhile, bosses seek out enemy commanders, using monstrous mounts and raw might to crush them in single combat. Killing with Cunning The Cruel Boys are renowned among Oryx for their war machines. While crude in appearance, these contraptions are dangerous indeed. The Beast Skewer Killbow is one of the most notorious kill, uh, Cruel Boy weapons. This enormous ballista can slay an Azerite Drake with a single jagged bolt. I actually got this one with my most recent magazines, and I built it just last night. It is a fun model. I cannot wait to use it. All right, moving on to Hobgrot Slittas. So here are those ten. What they look like are all painted up. Hobgrots are wily mercenaries who are notorious for their use of explosives. These vicious creatures work for the Cruel Boys, and they wield sharp slitta knives and deadly sulfuric scrap grenades. Foes are softened up with explosive bombardments and finished in a fury of stabbing knife blows. An explosive invention. Hobgrots often trade with mysterious and wicked Duradin in order to acquire weapons for the Cruel Boys, including the explosive sulfuric scrap grenades, or bang sticks as the Hobgrots call them. While short-range, these crude grenades are incredibly dangerous and can shred even armored Stormcast Eternals with blasts of shrapnel. Alright, now I'm going to roll for the boss trait. I got a four. Four is... This Hobgrot boss is obsessed with explosions and loves to demolish enemy fortifications. Alright, let's do the unit trait now. Got a five. These Hobgrots uh, compete with each other to try to impress their Auric bosses with new feats of cunning and violence. 
let's see, and we can use the table uh, that I do have set aside this time uh, to give the Hobgrot boss a name, as well as it's got three little uh, objectives that they can eventually try and perform. Let's get that name generator out. Okay, so first we're gonna go across the top. So this line here, oop, actually get it in frame. Uh, mostly. Okay, four. And four. So it is Slyro. And next, I'm actually going to pull out from the last uh, last video, I did not have this set aside, so I'm gonna do this for the Praetor Prime. Six, and six. So her name is Bora. All right. It's good that I'm getting these actually uh, recorded, because otherwise I would just completely forget and never actually uh, get a chance to write them down. All right, next up in the magazine is the How to Build, the Hobgrat Slittas. Obviously, mine are already built. And these ones are push fit. These were from the Dominion box at the launch of the edition. So very simple, just three pieces to build the uh, the boss for the unit. You got the banner and the noisemaker. Alternate options to build him as a horn blower. starting with just the auric flesh and the light belt. Painting the whole thing light belt here. Obviously, I'm just going to hit the, uh, the skin areas since I have mine primed. And then there are the metallic bits. Gallery of the finished slides. All right, next it goes over shooting. In Warhammer Age of Sigmar, missile weapons are key to victory in battle. Storm-wielding archers fire arrows to thin the enemy ranks before a killer charge, while cunning cruel boys use vicious contraptions to slaughter enemies when, wherever they stand. This guide shows you how to use these weapons in your games. So missile weapons, they work much like regular weapons, hand weapons, uh, except they're done in a separate phase, the shooting phase. The same deal as before, you roll your hit rolls, your wound rolls, save rolls, and then damage. And then we add that shooting phase in from previous games when we didn't have it. We have a war scroll for the Hobgrats. Shows the uh, shooting range, shooting in close combat. And then the playthrough for this issue is Explosion of Violence. The Cruel Boys have recruited a number of Hobgrot Slittas to help them tackle the Stormcast Eternals. Will the grenades of the mercenaries tip the tide of battle? Your battle continues. In this battle, you will use the rules for shooting for the first time, and you will battle until one side has slain all of their opponent's units. Follow the instructions carefully as you play through the battle and use the on later turns instructions after the first round of, de of battle. Deployment. Simple here, we got the Vindictors and the Praetor Prime for the Stormcast side. We have the Kill Boss and Stab Grot and the Gut Rippers, as well as the Hop Grot Slitters in the back. Right, unreliable Mercenaries. In this battle, you will use the Hobgrot Slittas for the first time. For this first battle, they will behave a bit differently from your other units. They can shoot at your enemies, but they will not fight in close combat. If at any point Hobgrot Slittas are the only Cruel Boys unit left in the battle, remove them. We have our War Scrolls for everything. Stormcast to get first turn. Shows the Stormcast attacks. And then Cruel Boys attacks.
Cruel Boy's turn. It adds that shooting phase so they can choose who they're going to shoot at or throw the grenades at. Then Cruel Boy's turn for close combat. Has that little blurb for the end of round. Uh, battered but broken. Both sides rally their forces and prepare for another assault. They will not stop until all of their enemies are slain. After the Stormcast Eternal player and the Cruel Boys player e have each had a turn, the battle round is over. Both players still have at least one unit left on the battlefield. A new round begins, starting with the Stormcast turn. Then a little blurb for the winner and the loser. Well, not loser, in which each side wins. <laughs> and then preview for next time. We're going to get a couple more paints. I've already popped open my uh, Katachan flesh and used it a little bit. And then number eight is the Lord Impuritant, who comes with Pet Griffhound. All right, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you'd be so kind, please leave a comment or a like. Uh, thank you again. I will see you next time.